Welcome back to Logic Basics. So now we're going to start our unit on reason and being, and we're going to go to the handout. And we're going to look at this very first section and see how far we can get. Uh, we'll see how many of these videos we have to make for this long handout, but we're going to take our time and go over it thoroughly. This is review from the reason uh, discussion we had at the very beginning, where we talked about reason in us. So when we did that handout, we said reason is ontological. Remember, ontos has to do with being. Reason applies to being as well as to thought. Now, this also means that there are some aspects of reality that uh, are not thinkable and they aren't beable, I guess. It can't be. They can't exist. For example, square circles. Reason as ontological tells us, there are no square circles. There are no things that have four uh, 90 degree angles that are also uh, round, no angles, okay? There are no uncaused events. There are no uncaused things that are caused. And there are no beings from non-being, no being from non-being. We'll talk more about that. We have a whole section on the distinction between being and non-being. Uh, but the laws of thought is what we mean primarily by reason, and the laws of thought tell us that there are no square circles. A square is a square, a square is not a non-square. Uh, to separate reason from being is to lose significant speech. Remember, we got this from Aristotle in his Metaphysics Book 4, where he said that reason, the laws of thought, also applies to being. There are no square circles in the world, not on the dark side of the moon, nowhere. And reason tells us that. Now, why is this important? Because there are some philosophers who try to separate reason from being, and this is the result. Separation of reason from being leads to nominalism and anti-realism in metaphysics. Nominalism says that words are just names for things, that things don't have a nature. So concepts don't grasp the essential nature of a thing because there are no natures. Uh, language is all there is. So we just have words that are about words that are about words. Um, Postmodernism will will call this language games. Um, all that we have are language games. So we need to find a way to overcome that because that leads to skepticism. Anti-realism is a position that takes a number of forms, but it says that we can't get to what is real. Uh, it could be idealism, which says that all that exists are ideas. Um, so we'll see several forms of anti-realism on this handout. Um, Postmodernism, insofar as it says that we construct reality, is anti-realism. There is no reality outside of our minds. We construct reality. Okay, that's a form of anti-realism. And uh, these both, nominalism and anti-realism, lead to skepticism. All right, point D says, to affirm reason is to see the need for realism in metaphysics. So we're seeing there's this contrast between anti-realism and realism. There are many people today who want to affirm realism, but haven't given an argument for realism. So they just assert it, and uh, the anti-realists can just assert their anti-realism as well, and we don't get very far, right? We just have a dispute, realism versus anti-realism, and how do you settle it? Um, and it may be that uh, we opt for a kind of pragmatism at that point. Well, we just go with what works. Um, we don't want to just go with what works because that's a avoiding the issue and what works depends upon your 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 goal and a goal depends upon your view of what is real so we get pushed back to this conversation anyway so we want to uh, get to realism but we are gonna have to do that through an argument so we'll apply logic to get an argument for realism that the material world that I that appears to me actually is outside of me. Okay, let's look at the next point. Reason is in human beings as the laws of thought and is in the world as the laws of being. Okay, this is kind of deep. It has to do with what the Greeks called the logos. 
um, they said that there's a logos in us that is our reason, our tool for grasping uh, concepts, grasping reality. And there's a logos in the world. So the world is orderly. It operates according to what they called a ratio or a nomos, a law. There are laws of nature out there. And reason in us grasps the laws outside of us. All right, so uh, this is kind of a deep thing. Maybe you want to think about that. Uh, Einstein said one of the most incomprehensible things about the universe is its comprehensibility, that we can understand it. So why is it that the world is the way it is, that we can understand it? Are we constructing it? Or is there an orderly uh, world outside of our minds that is uh, suitable for for knowing, for doing science in. All right, that's an implication. Okay, next point. Concepts grasp the essential nature of a thing. So we're, we're abstracting from the, the things we perceive or the things we think about, and we're grasping its whatness, its essence, its nature, its form. Now, this affirms that things have a nature that we aren't just making things up, we are grasping what's there. And we express these concepts with words, terms, or symbols, which we talked about earlier when we went over the concept handout. Um, this is a review of that. Uh, words, terms, and symbols are human communication. It could be written, it could be uh, spoken, it's um, cognitive in content. And Lastly, concepts express being or aspects of being. So ideas are in our minds. Words are how I convey those ideas to you. But these ideas are grasped from being or reality. So let's talk about that next when we talk about being and our most basic belief. Remember presuppositions? There are two presuppositions. That's what we're going to talk about next.